Welcome to the first edition of Otero Family History. Today is Sunday, February 5th, 2017. For a lot of listeners, today is also Super Bowl 51. The New England Patriots are up against the Atlanta Falcons. It's the Patriots' ninth Super Bowl and the Falcons' second. I'm your host, Diana DeLugan, Otero Family Historian. This broadcast is coming from my home office in Metro Phoenix, near the South Mountain Radio Towers. Since this is the first Sunday special podcast of Otero Family History, it seems appropriate to tell you a little bit about my background, how the Otero Family History Project started, and what to expect on future podcasts. I'm a proud, soon-to-be second and third-time great-grandmother, or bisabuela, anxiously awaiting a set of baby twin great-granddaughters due next month. I'm happily married to my best friend and spouse, Jim, have three children who I absolutely adore, and eight amazing grandchildren. My very first great-grandson gives me a reason to smile every single day. I started the Otero Family History Project in 2009 after my late mother, Celia Sinoy Hinojosa, asked me to conduct research on her maternal family line, the Otero Family of Tubac. She was in her early 70s and in failing health. She said she needed to know the truth whether she was related to the Tubac family. Just because you have a name doesn't mean you are, she said. I'm not a trained historian or genealogist. However, I have a Juris Doctorate and applied my legal research and interviewing skills to uncover Otero history in Arizona. As you'll discover in future podcasts, I rely heavily on historical documents to tell the story of the Otero family and discover family ties. Ultimately, a Pima County probate court record and Mexican birth register revealed that my maternal family line is related to the Oteros of Tubac. My mother is the great-granddaughter of Teofilo Otero, last heir at law of the Otero Spanish land grant of 1789. As part of my research, I established TheOteros.com, a family history project, to work collaboratively with Otero descendants from across the country to document our quite lengthy Arizona history. I encourage you to check out the site to discover what we've accomplished. The project produced a three-volume collection now available for education and research purposes at several Arizona historical facilities, the Primeria Alta Historical Society at Nogales, the Tubac Presidio State Park and Museum at Tubac, and the Arizona State History Museum Research Center at Tucson. Today's Sunday special podcast is the first broadcast of Otero Family History. Future podcasts will broadcast each Sunday. Topics will include important Arizona history events that affected pioneer residents like the Oteros of Tubac, We'll do a deep dive into the history of the Otero family, and we'll also discuss how the research was conducted to locate the information obtained. I hope that by sharing research experiences, others like you can further your own family history research. So why is the Otero family important to Arizona history? On January 10th, 1789, Don Torribio de Otero received the first private title for ownership of land in present-day Arizona. The land grant issued Don Torrivio two parcels of land, a solar or house lot in the town of Tubac and a second farmland just north of town. The history of the solar is a bit complicated that we'll review on another day, but I can share that the ranch property was sold in the 1930s to private interests. Today, it exists as the Tubac Golf Resort and Spa at Tubac. Ronald D. Allred purchased the Tubac Golf Resort from a private non-Otero family-held entity in October 2002 for $7.28 million. The Tubac Golf Resort and Spa is a member of the Historic Hotels of America and celebrates the Otero family history to this day. Next week, as we approach the anniversary of Arizona statehood, you'll hear a brief synopsis of Arizona's history under the influence of six different governments, because it's important that we view each historical event that we will be discussing in the context of the government under which Arizona and Tubac was governed. You'll also be introduced to some of the major historical figures in Otero family history. 
the Mia today by reading a brief article from the September 2011 United States National Archives in the Region publication titled La Tierra de los Pioneros, or Land of the Pioneers. It was issued for Hispanic Heritage Month. It reads, Arizona is a young state, even by American standards. Next February, Arizona will be 100 years old. And yet, Arizona has a remarkably long history. The oldest occupied village in the United States is there. Francisco Vasquez de Coronado first entered what is now the United States there. And the first European words describing its exotic terrain were written over three generations before the pilgrims landed in Plymouth. For the National Archives at Riverside, too, the young state provides us with our oldest document. It is a land grant for a rancho granted in the name of the Spanish king to one Torrivio de Otero near the Presidio at Tubac on the Santa Cruz River between Nogales and Tucson. In 1789, Torrivio de Otero was granted land near the Santa Cruz River by Nicolás de la Herán, commander of the Presidio. The grant is a beautiful document covered in ornate official seals and written in a hand easy to admire. It is, of course, written in the Spanish of the time. We rely on a translation done by the Surveyor General's office in the 1880s. Eran stated that the land grant was granted to Otero for the, quote, purpose of pursuing his calling as an agriculturalist, close quote. At the end of the grant, Eran records, quote, I took him by the hand and gave him possession of said lands. He, according to custom, scattering earth and stones and pulling up herbage. Close quote. And the transfer was made from crown to cultivator. The Court of Private Land Claim records show that by 1880, Otero's descendants had faced many significant challenges in both working and keeping the land. They survived drought, Indian raids, squatters, and justified their land claims to both the Mexican and then the American governments. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we salute the story of the Otero family who farmed the desert for generations before the first Americans journeyed west. I hope you enjoyed the article. Thanks for listening. This is Diana DeLugan, Otero family historian, signing off. Hasta la próxima. Thank you.